Blow with the mop, real John got it. Uh, Grinding from the bottom. Our tale of the tape for this highly anticipated welterweight fight. All right, Herb Dean, our referee for this Herb. one, just about to get underway. Herb. Can you believe we are being paid to be in this arena tonight? It is a super fight of the highest order. George St. Pierre, Conor McGregor, we are I still gave money at the door because I felt like I was doing a robbery if I got to watch the He's our God. And Mitch is in a takedown. Why not? Right, he's in a half guard position here, DC, and in a good spot to dole out a lot of damage, I would think. A lot of damage could be done from the half guard. You sit back on that leg, you press down into your opponent, you drop elbows, you drop punches. What is very key is you controlling the underhook on the far side. If you give up that underhook, your opponent can use the half guard to build up to an elbow, sweep, or just chase down a single leg. McGregor getting worked here from the top. Let's see if he goes for a sweep to try to get back to his feet. Oh, he got to his spot. If you're the bottom fighter, DC, what do you do? You got to move. You got to shrimp. You got to get up on a hip to try to move your opponent off of you or pull him down to close the space. Well, the ground and pound is there once again. Strong work here by St. Pierre. In the half guard. That was nice. Oh, into the mouth. Oh. Just over two minutes to go in round one. Lands a big elbow there. Got that submission locked in. He's in real trouble. Yeah, it looks tight. It looks like he's going to get this. Oh, it looks like he's safe now. Wow, that's crazy. Because generally when you're that deep into a triangle, you do not escape. But he remained calm. And he found a way to get out and be safe again. Great job defensively. Nice positional control here. He Bottom fighter move. better move. Yeah, he's got to move, John. He's got to shrimp and try to either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. Well, this is a tough fighter to buck off. Very good pressure and work here by George St. Pierre. All right, he's trying to control posture here. Now trying to hip escape. He's just trying to move out of this position off the bottom. Posture's up now and lands a vicious head strike. Man, another one lands. He's trying to pound his opponent's head through the canvas. Round two is next. Let's check out some of the action now from that previous round. And he really kept finding a home for those kicks. Yeah, and why would you change it? If your opponent is not going to check, if he's going to stand there and he's not on his toes and he's stationary, you keep driving those kicks into his thighs, into his body, until he makes some sort of adjustment. You ready to fight? Ready. Go. Second round on the way. Effectively from the top here. Nice ground and pound by George St. Pierre. Oh, staying busy from top position. He lands another ground strike there. McGregor's in half court. Mm, nice. Oh, this is where you don't want to be, though. We'll see what he does here. He postures up and lands to the head. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. He continues to land a high volume of strikes on his opponent at will. Well, I mean, John, the guy can fight everywhere. And he can fight everywhere 
meaning he can fight on the ground, he can fight in the stand-up, but he's also able to do it because his cardio is so good. Right. This is one of the best fighters that we have seen for a long time, and it is showing in this performance. Yep, gotta be very careful there. Oh, uh, big elbow. All right, under three minutes now to go in round two. All right, half guard position for him here, and I can hear Dominic Cruz in the back of my head just screaming about underhook somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. he loves I mean, but he's right, right? He's so right in terms of if you're on your back in the half guard, one thing you can't be is flat on your back, up on the elbow, right. you need to be half on the side, and you need to control the far side underhook. It is a battle for underhook when you're fighting in the half guard position on the mat. So a much different approach for him here in this second round. He was a little bit tentative in round one, a little bit of a feeling out process. Now he has clearly found his rhythm, found the range. We'll see if he can continue with more activity here in round two. Nice job defensively there to get the guard up. Shot is blocked by George St. Pierre. Well, it looks as though that strike maybe opened up a cut around the island. Yeah, it looks like that strike opened up a cut, John, but there's nothing to worry about now. But he's got to start to protect it. Yes, yeah, smart adjustment. Yep. Pretty good work with the ground and pound here by St. Pierre. These ground strikes really started to add up. There's another one. Hurt. Big right hand there. Seconds winding down in round two. Oh, beautiful counter with the jam. And the horn sounds on round two. All right, there's the end of the round. And what a five minutes it was for him. Rocked and stunned his opponent multiple times. And I don't know, did his opponent just say uncle on the stool? Or is he going to fight on? I mean... He may say uncle. When you're getting beat and battered and bruised like that, it's a testament to your toughness. But it's not ideal. You want to be competitive. That round was not competitive at all. You ready to fight? You ready? Third round underway. This is a terrible position. Both fighters get up now. Posture's up now. That's a vicious head strike. How'd he take it? Nice movement to avoid some of those strikes from the top. All right, so he's got the body locked down here, DC, or so it appears. This is not a guy you want anywhere near your back. Great job finding his shots from the top position. Well, his opponent seemed to be stunned to a significant extent, but was able to recover, and it's almost like he let him off the hook a little bit. Kind of let him off the hook. He needed to really put his foot on the gas to try to find that finish. Well, not only has he stayed aggressive as he was in the previous round, landing a high volume of strikes, but he's also been efficient, not just with his strikes, but also with his body movement. Complete performance out of this fighter here tonight. Starting to show signs of swelling. Timely defense there. Huge block for him. Slips the punch. Beautiful body kick. Both fighters hanging down in the pocket and both landing. Oh, big shot land. St. Pierre's cheek looks like it's cut here, starting to bleed a little bit now. Great timing on that double leg. St. Pierre's in half court. A lot of top pressure being applied here as he works out of side control. Now trying to isolate an arm. Yeah, he's trying to go to a Kimura lock right here. He'll either try to get the submission or use the sweep. Oh, the winner by 
submission. Absolutely remarkable what this fighter was able to accomplish here tonight as he can see the years of repetitions in the gym to set it up and ultimately get the tap there. Great technique to set up the finish. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. I mean, you know this guy has such a great submission game that you cannot lay in his guard. He's so skilled, he's so tricky, and he's so good at weaving a web that gets you lost in it that he made him pay for it tonight and got the submission victory. And we go inside the octagon. Bruce Buffer has your official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean's called a stop to this contest at three minutes, 31 seconds of the third round. Declaring the winner by tap out, George Rush St. Special about me, you can already tell the energy is different. Confidence is at the highest level, I don't ever see it dipping. Try me if you want to guarantee that you gonna wish you hadn't did it. That's a war that you can never win, but hey, I like the optimism. Giving over half my life to this, I think I made it.